that, isn't it? Amen. Amen. Uh, I'll tell you one thing, boy, when you get in life and you don't have a place, sometimes uh, you're so burdened with things and it's almost sometimes like we're just bothering God all the time. I'm glad that God never gets tired of seeing our failures. God sees our failures and still listens to us, does he not? We can go to him even though we've acted in an inappropriate way, and God still forgives us and still loves us. Amen? What a beautiful song. If you have your Bible, uh, 1 Samuel chapter 19, 1 Samuel chapter 19, I do apologize for running behind. was in the office and then hit the, the speedway, I call it. That's 58 Highway. Is it me or does everybody go 75, 80 on? I mean, I'm, I'm trying to obey, obey the law and they're going beside me just buzzing through here. And I'm like, okay, well, I'll get in the right lane, the slow lane. Then they're buzzing beside me and coming around me and on oh, me. I guess it comes with getting age. You slow down a little bit. I call it driving under the influence of the Holy Spirit, just obeying <laughs> the law, man. You know, 50 is 50. Any way you can look at it, any way you want. But if you get pulled over and you tell the officer that uh, you were running late for church, he's not going to believe. He don't want to hear that. Amen. <laughs> he, he wants to know why you're speeding. Uh, but if you have your Bible, 1 Samuel chapter 19, starting in verse 11. Saul also sent messengers unto David's house to watch him and to slay him in the morning. And Michael, David's wife, told him, saying, if thou, have not, uh, <clears throat> if thou save not thy life tonight, tomorrow thou shalt be slain. So Michael let David down through a window, and he went and fled and escaped. And Michael took an image and laid it in the bed and put a pillow of goat's hair for his bolster, that be his pillow, and covered it with a cloth. And when Saul sent messengers to take David, she said, he is sick. And Saul uh, sent the messengers again to, uh, to see David, saying, Bring him up to me in the bed that I may slay him. Father, we love you tonight. Thank you for your goodness to us. Thank you for the songs that have been played. Lord, the faithfulness of your people. We do thank you, Lord, for those that are starting to come back and some that visited this morning. And We'd ask you to help us to just uh, be mindful of what you're doing, Lord, and allow you to have your way in our lives. And uh, Lord, it seems like everywhere I've ever been, when you begin to bless, problems begin to arise. Help that not happen. Help us to be humble and die to ourselves and allow you to live uh, uh, your will through our lives. I pray now that you'd help us as we look in the Bible. I pray for these that are away from us, Lord. Thank you for those, some, that have been coming somewhat on Sunday night. I pray, Lord, uh, as, uh, Lord, they're not here tonight, I pray you'd trouble them and remind them of their responsibility uh, to be in the house of God. And I pray, Lord, uh, I plead the blood of Christ, a spiritual stability to come to this place, Lord, that we could see uh, uh, some stabilism in, in the spiritual things of God. Uh, we're asking you, Lord, uh, to provide the funds uh, to be able to run a bus route, uh, Father. Uh, an unselfish need, we're not wanting it to take trips, although we may use it for that, but uh, to haul children into the house of God to be able to hear the Bible and uh, to be able to be worked with by people that love them, Lord. And we're asking to, uh, in, the, in the future days, along with the children coming in, salvation would come and the baptistry would be filled, Lord, and we would see uh, parents coming to see their children be baptized and moms and dads getting saved. So many things that could transpire from this. Help us to realize this is your responsibility. Uh, though the, except the Lord build the house, they that labor, labor in vain. Uh, be with us tonight. Help us to take the warnings of the wiles of Michael and uh, Lord be able to look at them and, and, and just to be able to be truthful with the things of God and uh, see how uh, the devil, Lord, has tricks up his sleeves to try and hinder us. And uh, if it wasn't for you and your goodness in our life, we would all utterly fail you, Lord. Uh, but greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. 
And I'm so grateful tonight I'm a Christian. And I pray that you'd help us as we look in the Bible. We'll love you for it. We'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You know, uh, one man said this. He said, Saul was a very clever man, full of many wiles, full of many tricks and how to try and kill David. And you know, we've preached on some of them. Uh, one was how that uh, after David had taken out Goliath, uh, Saul saw the military skill. And he knew that he had a problem. He knew that he wasn't just going to be able to go up and take David out. There was going to, he was going to have to catch David off a of guard, friend. And Saul had lied to him about giving him his daughters. You remember those messages. And uh, he, had, he had tried to get David motivated to take out the Philistines. Uh, and in the midst of that, die. Well, trick after trick after trick fails. And so here's another one, friend, where he has just bluntly come out and said, I'm going to kill David. And he sends the watchers. Do you remember that? Uh, we've been preaching on the thought, uh, be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Saul has reaped much trickery against David. Uh, by my, one, one way was by using his daughters. And now Saul has found someone that has more tricks up her sleeve than her daddy does. Uh, one man said it this way. He said, Michael, Saul, being filled of, of the wiles, has met his match in his own daughter's life. He's tried to, to take out and do things wickedly and by trickery and now in the midst of him thinking that he said he was going to give Michael as a snare to David, the trap is going to come back on Saul. Did you know what? God hears and sees everything we see and do. And, and, and I'm telling you, friend, we better be careful. We're going to reap what we sow in life. It's coming to pass. If we don't sow the Word of God and live the Word of God and be motivated to try to do what's right for God, in the midst of things that we just decide to do, one day the chickens are going to come home to roost. They're going to come home. Here it is. I want us to look here, first of all, at this window. Uh, Michael is going to let David down through a window. But the Bible says here, uh, notice what it says in verse 11. And Saul also sent messengers unto David's house to watch him. Now these watchmen were primarily focused on the door of David, the doors in the house, if you will. Let's say they were two. There could have been only one. There may have been three. I don't know how many there were. But I do know that you entered and exited the home through a door. And so the watchmen here are primarily focused on the entrance of the house. Well, Michael and her trickery, while they're watching the house, friend, she's going to use the window to let David down and escape with her trickery. Well, the Bible gives us, there's three uh, famous windows in the Word of God. If you'll remember, one is in our text. The other was in the life of Joshua, where Rahab, uh, the window was used in Rahab's situation. And then the other was in 1 Corinthians in the book of Acts where Paul was let down through a window. Uh, one man said this, and I want to quote him. He said, God sometimes used the simple means uh, to defeat the devil. He doesn't have to use an impressive means to be able to impre uh, defeat the devil. God will use the simple thing. It was a very simple thing to use a window to escape it. You know, uh, nowadays we'd think there'd be four or five helicopters and inspector gadgets and stuff to try to pop down and press everybody on a way to escape. And God just looked over and God said, hey, just drop him through the window. And the thought there is the Lord uses the simple means to accomplish His will. Number one, I personally believe, uh, to instruct the devil that he can do anything he wants anytime and he's that simple to refute or to uh, bring victory over the devil. God can do it so simple. There's another one there. Sometimes we lack an impressive uh, means. We don't have everything that's just prayed about. We don't have everything that we 
all of us don't sing. All of us can't sing like others. Some of us can't preach or teach or play the piano. None of us, I don't think you're the only one here that can play the piano as much as I know of. I'm a, I don't even believe I can play chopsticks. But anyway, uh, we're not all, we don't all have the impressive means of, of life and how to pre, uh, impress people to get God's will done. And so the Lord there is using a simple means to, to prove to the saints of God that He can do His will through the simple things of His people. God doesn't have to have a lot of great things to accomplish things. Now listen, God uses things. We have some, some, um, some impressive things that we uh, use in the, in the will of God. But this window here is a picture of how God can use something so simple to accomplish His will. Uh, I don't want to stay on the window all night because I, I feel like the Lord would help us have us labor on another thought. And that is simply... Uh, I want to call it the wood. I got that. I stole that from John Butler. Uh, verse 13, look what he says here in chapter 19. I mean chapter 19, verse 13. And Michael took an image and laid it in the bed. Now this image is an idol, friend. Uh, but it's a different idol than what you and I think of. Uh, I wrote these few notes down here. In Genesis there, friend, in uh, Rachel's life, Rachel could hide those small idols out of Laban's presence under her skirt or under her gown, if you will, where she sat at. They were so little she could easily hide them. Well, this image is not going to be hid in such a way. Uh, Butler said he believes after studying it was much like a, uh, a block of wood with some shoulders and a head on it, and it was more or less an image, an idol that she would worship. And uh, when she laid that image of wood in the bed that was carved out like a head, when they looked on it from a ways off, they kind of glanced at it. Uh, it was used as trickery to the watchman to buy David time to escape. Well, there's something about this wood here that I want us to see, this idol... First of all, uh, you can't justify Michael's idolatry because she used it to help God's servant to escape. Uh, you can't do that. Uh, but there is a clear fact here that, that I read today that I thought was really uh, good. And, it, and, and, it, and it's simply this. This idol is proof of Michael's spiritual difficulties in life. And her and David here are not spiritually compatible. David's not worshiping idols, friend. David's worshiping God. But here is a marriage where there's no spiritual compatibility. You see that? Anytime there's a home where there's no spiritual compatibility, friend, there's going to be problems. There is going to be problems. And here, David has already had some difficulties. Go back with me. Uh, excuse, excuse me. Uh, turn forward, if you will. He's going to have more difficulties. Look in 2 Samuel chapter 6 with me. In 2 Samuel chapter 6, uh, we're going to see where David is bringing home the ark, friend. And uh, when he brings home the ark, He's going to dance. He's going to get happy before the Lord in 2 Samuel 6. And uh, I want us to look around verse 16. 616, I believe it is. Now, he's bringing home the ark, and Michael is going to respond. Let me just say this. When there's an attitude in the home about the spiritual matters, there's a deep-rooted problem somewhere okay when 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 other things are put higher than the spiritual things of God I'm telling you friend you got a problem on your hands if you're a if you're in a marriage and, and your wife would whether 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 watch a TV is read the Bible there's a problem friend if she'd rather stay at the house rather be in the house of God there's a problem amen I'm telling you that's what's going on here Michael friend Michael 
has very much declined in spiritual matters and it's coming out in this marriage. First of all, through this image, she ought to have been worshiping Jehovah God rather than some square with a head on it. Amen? Maybe, maybe if she had been worshiping God and her dad had been right with God worshiping Jehovah, she would have never needed an image, image to use for trickery. Amen? If she would have just been doing God's will, but she wasn't. So I want us to notice in verse 16 that David is bringing back the ark and he is a very joyful time for him. Notice what's said in verse 16. And as the ark of the Lord came into the city of David, Michael, Saul's daughter, looked through a window and saw David leaping and dancing before the Lord. And she despised him in her heart. Oh, me. Problems in the home. You'll go on down. She confronts David and basically makes him. Well, let's just read it. Let's just look at the, what it says here. Verse 17, and they brought in the ark of the Lord. Everybody in the camp of Israel ought to have been shouting, man, bless God, blessings coming here. The ark of the Lord is here. Watch what happens. And they brought in the ark of the Lord and set it in its place and in the midst of the tabernacle. And David pitched for it. And David offered burnt offerings and peace offerings before the Lord. And as soon as David had made an end of uh, the offering, burnt offerings and peace offerings, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord of hosts. And he, dealt, and he dwelt among the people, even among the, uh, the whole multitude of Israel, as well as the women and as the men. To everyone he brought them all a cake, bread, and a good piece of flesh. I believe that right there was a, a prime rib or a ribeye. Amen. But he brought them a good piece of flesh, a flagon of wine. So all the people departed, everyone into his house. Then David returned to bless his house, speaking of his own home. And Michael, the daughter of Saul, came out to meet him, to meet David, and said, How glorious was the king of Israel today, who uncovered himself today in the eyes of the handmaidens of his servants, as one of the twain fellows shamelessly uncovereth himself. She going to rebuke God's man. Here she is rebuking God's man for doing the right thing and she's as backslid and as far from God as anybody in the nation of Israel. My, my, my. Scolding the man of God for doing what's right. And here's why, friend. There's, there's no compatibility in the marriage. There's no harmony in the marriage. There's no spiritual harmony in the home. And when there's no spiritual harmony in the home, you've got some problems, Jack. You've got problems. Uh, here he is, and he, he, he's looking at this, and I'll guarantee you David said, what in the world have I done? Uh, what is going on here? But he used, she uses this wood to trick her father. And then I want you to notice her words. Look with me in verse 14. Go back to our text. 1 Samuel chapter 19 and verse 14. And when Saul sent messengers to take David, watch this. Uh, and when, when Saul sent messengers to take David, she said, he is sick. That's a lie. That's a lie. He ain't sick. But with her words, she tricked uh, she, she used this window and this wooden image and now it's escalated, if you will, to her words. She looked these men right in the eye and lied to them. Oh, the chickens have come home to roost, my friend. Uh, you remember what Saul had told and promised David that if he would take out the Philistines, he could have his daughter. David went and took out the Philistines and saw it lied to him. And now here's his own flesh and blood lying to him. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. I wonder, friend, why in the world we think that we can do certain things and get away with things and act like the Lord is never going 
to bring it back. There are consequences, friend, in how we conduct ourselves, what we do and what we say. There is going to be a reaping of the sowing, friend. They that sow to the flesh reap corruption. God, and here's another thing about that simple means. God don't never do something to impress the flesh. The flesh stinks. And if God's going to do something, friend, it's not going to be by any impressive means. God will take the simple things of life and do something that we would never have been able to be able to dreamed up or thought of. And the reason he does this, he said, I'm not going to give my glory to another. God's not going to let something transpire in this church and grow and then sit back like we've done something. Now, I will say this, the Lord does bless us for our faithfulness and he does bless us for the, for the uh, uh, spiritual uh, uh, desire that we have to please him. God blesses his people. Don't misunderstand me. And there's rewards in heaven. Don't, don't, don't misunderstand what I'm saying. But that's not our motive. Our motive is to please the Lord Jesus. And here, Saul literally thinks that he's done all this I'll give her to him for a snare. And he really thinks that that attitude is not going to have a reckoning day. Time passes. David excels. Saul have slain thousands and David ten thousands. God's blessings on David. Jealousy comes up. Saul's so filled with himself and the flesh. He's got it all figured out. I'll give her as a snare. Friend, you're playing chess with God. You're going to lose every time. Amen. God will take what you think is a way to get your own wicked ways and use it against yourself. And so God does, and when he, when he does that, God brings in Michael, and he's, God has already supplanted Michael. He's had Michael in Saul's heart and in David's life. Guess what? Not so much primarily to rebuke Saul, but to give David a safe way in life because David is doing the will of God. And here this very window, which is a simple means, God is highlighting to you and I the simple means of life. We don't have to have all the impressive things in this world. The Lord, the, Lord, the Lord is capable of using simple things in our life to get his will accomplished. And uh, I, I would love to go ahead and put up a, a flyer. I'll, I'll have some more information. I know Brother Marty would be willing to help us with that. And uh, you, you might not be able to. You, you may not spiritually be where you think you need to be to look someone in the eye and ask them whether they're going to heaven or be able to win them to the Lord or or at least talk to them about their salvation. I hope you get there one day. If you're not, but I think all of us could put a, a flyer in a, on a door or hand a flyer to a, to a mother or a father and try to uh, get an open door to where we could uh, minister to their children. And you may end up ministering to them. You never know. Uh, but I'm confident this is God's will. It's been God's will. It always has. Uh, COVID uh, has, has greatly disrupted our service in the Lord. But at the same time, God is going to, uh, to, to use some of these things. And I honestly believe that the Lord is going to bring this thing through COVID. And I believe he's going to bless our church. I believe he's going to bless a lot of churches. And so uh, when we do go out, we do want to be... I'm not saying wear a mask. I'm not wearing a mask. If you want to wear a mask, you wear a mask. I'm not going to. Now, if I'm asked by a homeowner, if they want me to come in and put a mask on, I will. Hello? Amen. I will. If there's, a, if there's a mother or a father and they, they, oh, we'd love to talk to you more, do you mind putting a mask on and coming in and telling us about your program? I'll do it. I'll do it in a heartbeat. Amen? Amen. Uh, and uh, try. I hope that doesn't come up, though. I don't like the stinking things, but I still wear them, amen, if I have to. Uh, but just, just trying our best to be able to reach someone. There's a flip side of this in closing. God is, we're going to reap what we sow. And I, I don't want this to sound like I'm putting the blame on you or me or whoever. 
but uh, evangelism, we've had uh, very little opportunity here recently. And now the door is beginning to open wide open. And I really believe if we'll do our very best to get out and try to see and try to reach people, we're going to reap in a, in a good way. We're going to reap in a good way. God's going to use these things. And uh, starting next Sunday night, uh, we'll take an offering up tonight, and it can go where we normally been putting it. Uh, and that'll be a savings. I'd like for those funds to stay in the where they are. Amen. I think we ought to. That's why we give them, right? We give them on Sunday night, and you stuck it in a savings account. Uh, but let's just put it out before uh, those that are coming and ask the Lord to bless it and start taking money up for a bus. And we'll take it a little, little step at a time and, and, and let the Lord lead us. Amen. Just let him lead us. And hopefully before too long, Brother Paul, you'll have a, uh, you and Miss Diane have a bus route. Y'all did say you'd do that, didn't you? See, God's already provided that. The, their heart's already in it. I, knew, I, I, I really did know that. I really did. I thought that y'all would be well. I prayed and asked the Lord. And no worries, I'll not have to worry about no foolishness. I'll not have to worry about nobody abusing the van. I'll not have to worry about someone who's not skilled or qualified to be able to pick children up and handle children. I mean, I can just keep going on as I was praying and thought about that. And uh, it's almost like the Lord said, okay, you're aiming in the right direction. Here you go, providence. Now, I don't believe it'll be long, and we'll have, uh, we'll be able to walk out there and tangibly touch something the Lord has provided for us, and it'll build our faith. It'll build our confidence in the things of the Lord. But Saul here, my, 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 what trickery he played to try and kill David. And God said, okay, if you want to play that way, if you want to go that route, I'm going to let you, but watch out, friend. You don't know what you're inviting. And here comes someone that he would have never dreamed outmatched by his own flesh. Heavenly Father, we love you tonight. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for the word of God. Thank you for the Bible. Thank you for the faithfulness of our people. Thank you for our church, Lord. Uh, I think many times that some of us, if not all of us, Lord, including myself, we may take for granted the blessing that you've provided here. We are in a building that's paid for. We have no debt. And, and, and we thank you for that, but also along with thanking you, we thank you for the faithful, diligent, tithing people who have served you and given to see this come to pass. I pray, Lord, that you would start watering some of the seed and breathing upon some of the fruit, maturing some of the fruit that has been planted. And we are asking that uh, we would see, Lord, uh, more people stable on Sunday morning and Sunday night and Lord, even on Wednesday night, we, it was our prayer to see 20 on Wednesday night in a, in a consistency. And we're praying and asking for you to do that. Lord, help us not be selfish. There's many more churches out here uh, that are suffering, that need uh, things, that need you to bless. I pray for them, Lord. And I pray, God, that uh, you would help us to be an example. I pray and thank you for our Facebook family, Lord. Thank you for the men that that are operating that thing uh, tonight and uh, Lord taking care of all that. Um, I remember when we used to have a, uh, just an outreach service to the nursing homes and uh, we would do tapes and CDs and those times have passed. Now you've, we're so uh, highly, uh, technology is so high advanced that uh, they can sit in their own home and watch the preaching of the Bible, and for those that physically cannot come, what a blessing that is. Help us to focus on that and allow you to take care of all the others. You know who should be here and who can be here and who can't, but thank you for the, uh, for the ministry there that we have. Be with us throughout this week. Father, bring us back on Wednesday night. Help us all to return Wednesday. Uh, Lord, thank you for those that came out on Saturday and worked and uh, Lord was just willing to uh, put some sweat into the work of God and do some things. And I'm asking you, Father, you know who was here and you know who did what. And Lord, I, I pray you'd bless them. I pray you'd do something special for them this week. And just out of your own unique way, how you do sometime. And you remind us when we do right, Lord, uh, I can remember a, a message out of the book of Isaiah. Blessings follow obedience. 
And I pray, God, that you would uh, bless your people. What an encouragement they were to this preacher. And I know that you were pleased with us yesterday. Uh, help us now as we go to our homes. I pray you'd bring those that are sick back to us. Uh, Lord, those that have been away for a while, I, I thank you to be able to see some of them start coming back. I pray there would be a, a stableness about their um, attendance to the house of God. And I promise you, Lord, we'll love you for it. Give us this bus, Lord. Give us the finances. Help us to get come to some way, some means to be able to uh, buy something clean and nice. And we're representing you and uh, we want something uh, nice, Lord. We'll love you for it. We'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name. God bless you. You're dismissed. <laughs>